What constitutes free speech, but especially on the internet? This pamphlet from the Brennan Center called Online Speech and the First Amendment, 10 Principles from the Supreme Court, gives an excellent overview, and this is a summary of the points made in that pamphlet. One, the First Amendment's protections apply to online and offline speech. In the Peckingham versus North Carolina case in 2017, while in the past there may have been difficulty in identifying the more important places for the exchange of views, today the answer is clear. It is cyberspace and social media in particular. As Congress continues its important oversight of online platforms, it must not legislate in ways that would threaten free expression online. Two, the First Amendment protects the right to receive and process information no matter where the information originates. In the Stanley v. Georgia case in 1969, when the Supreme Court overturned a Georgia law that made it a crime to possess pornographic films, it's quoted, This right to receive information and ideas, regardless of their social worth, is fundamental to our free society. The court also held the receipt and possession of information is protected regardless of the sources of information. In Lamont versus Postmaster General in 1965, the court rules that a federal law preventing the receipt of, of communist political propaganda in mail from abroad was an unconstitutional abridgment of the addressee's First Amendment rights. Three, the First Amendment protects speech that society may consider offensive or reprehensible, including indecent and hateful speech. Healy versus James in 1972, the court overturned a state-supported college's decision to refuse to recognize a local chapter of students for a democratic society. It was explained that the First Amendment protections are so broad because the freedoms of speech, press, petition, and assembly are guaranteed by the First Amendment, must be accorded to the ideas we hate, or sooner or later they'll be denied to the ideas we cherish. In 2017, the court made it clear that the First Amendment protections extend to speech that expresses hateful or derogatory viewpoints. In Mattel v. Tam, the court emphasized that the speech that demeans on the basis of race, ethnicity, gender, religion, age, disability, or, or any other similar ground is hateful, but the proudest boast of our free speech is jurisprudence is that we protect the freedom to express the thought that we hate. Speech that may be considered indecent is also protected. Four, political speech and advocacy are the core of the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects the right of any person to engage in political speech and advocacy, regardless of whether it concerns a particular issue, public official, or candidate for office. In Mills versus the state of Alabama in 1966, the First Amendment exists to protect the free discussion of governmental affairs. Five, the First Amendment protects anonymous speech. In McClintyre versus Ohio Elections Committee in 1995, an author's decision to remain anonymous is an aspect of the freedom of speech protected by the First Amendment. The court went on to explain that legislators cannot ban anonymous political speech because anonymity exemplifies the purpose behind the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment in particular to protect unpopular individuals from retaliation and their ideas from suppression at the hand of an intolerant society. Six, the First Amendment protects false speech and speech criticizing public figures. In New York Times Co. versus Sullivan in 1964, the court stated that we have a profound national commitment to the principle that Debate on public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, and that it means it may well incite vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp attacks on government and public officials. Speech that is not defamatory is protected even if the speaker knows it is false, as long as it does not cause specific harm. The remedy for speech that is false is speech that is true, and this is the ordinary course in a free society. United States versus Alvarez, 2012. Seven, the First Amendment protects against government attempts to target speech based on its content. The Constitution's sharply limits the government's ability to enact laws that target speech based on the topics it covers or the views it expresses. The government's ability to impose content-based burdens on speech raises the, the specter that the government may effectively drive certain ideas or viewpoints from the marketplace. Holding the First Amendment places this sort of discrimination behind the power of government. Simon & Schuster versus members of New York State Crime Victims Board, 1991. 8. The First Amendment protects against the government's efforts to impose prior restraints on publications. In 1963, the Supreme Court ruled that the state commissioned to review literature for obscene, indecent, or impure language and investigate and recommend prosecution of the distribution of those materials constituted an unconstitutional prior restraint. The court held that any system of prior restraint of expression comes to this court bearing a heavy presumption its constitutional validity, such as the government cannot enjoin particular publications that it finds objectionable. 
judicial determination that such publications may be lawfully banned. Bantam Books versus Sullivan, 1963. Nine, the First Amendment protects individuals from being compelled by the government to communicate messages which they disagree. In addition to guaranteeing individuals' rights to say what they want, the First Amendment protects them from being compelled by the government to say something against their will. In 1943, the Supreme Court struck down a state regulation requiring students to salute the flag or be expelled from school. If there's any fixed star in our constitutional constellation, it is that no official high or petty can be can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, or other matters of opinion, or force citizens to confess by word or act their faith therein. West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett, 1943. 10. The First Amendment protects speakers' rights by limiting their ability for intermediaries. The First Amendment limits the ability that may be imposed on third parties who enable speakers to reach an audience in order to protect the rights of speakers who depend on them. In Smith v. California, for example, the court said that booksellers could not be strictly liable for obscene content in books they sell because cautious booksellers would over-enforce removing both legal and illegal books from the shelves, resulting in censorship affecting the whole public that would be hardly less virulent for being privately administered. 1959, New York Times Co. versus Sullivan, the court observed that failing to protect the New York Times from liability for third-party advertisements would discourage newspapers from carrying editorial advertisements and so might shut off an important outlet of promulgation of information and ideas by persons who do not themselves have access to publishing facilities. The same principles apply to laws holding today's internet and intermediaries liable for user speech. Restrictive rules which effectively outsource censorship of lawful speech to powerful private companies may violate the First Amendment.